this hearing no way takes away from the magnificent achievement uh, in the previous legislative session with the passage of the housing uh, package of bills uh, that were signed by Governor Brown uh, this past Friday. Um, but I think this hearing's time is, uh, is uh, the timing of this hearing is, is, is well-timed uh, from the standpoint that I think everyone last week acknowledged uh, that that package, while a substantial step forward, uh, was not mission accomplished, uh, that we have a lot more work to do in California to make sure that this state is an affordable place, uh, particularly for those uh, in the middle and working class, folks who get up every day, go to work, um, and yet probably yesterday were sitting at their kitchen table trying to uh, uh, pay their rent, right? And uh, as I was thinking about that uh, yesterday, uh, this this hearing could not come any sooner. Um, so just to maybe uh, set the table a little bit, you know, we are suffering uh, through a very severe housing crisis. And California's average rent is 50% higher than the rest of the nation. More and more families are squeezed by monthly rents and cannot afford to buy a home. Uh, in my home community of San Diego, the average home price was increased by 12% last year to $530,000. Um, however, based on the housing ratio used by lenders, people earning San Diego's average median income can only afford a home loan of $293,000, basically half of the going market rate. Uh, in addition, we have seen the number of Californians experiencing homelessness skyrocket. And of course, that is front of mind for me and my fellow colleagues from the San Diego delegation as we deal with a hepatitis A crisis, which has taken the lives of 18 uh, of our local homeless and has infected hundreds more. We know that this, uh, this uh, outbreak is not contained to San Diego County, unfortunately has been observed in LA County, Santa Cruz, Orange County, and elsewhere. Uh, so this is a collective and statewide concern. This year, as I mentioned, we have made some progress. On Friday, Governor Brown signed a collection of bills designed to take the first step to uh, better this situation uh, when it comes to housing in California. But as I say, there is so much more work to be done. Across California, uh, income spectrums, uh, all income spectrums need relief from unaffordable rents and bloated housing prices. Middle income housing is an important component of our housing stock and housing demand. It makes up uh, housing that, severes, uh, that serves millennials, uh, working families, young professionals, and retirees. However, it's my personal judgment that as a state, we have not done enough uh, thinking about how we can provide housing for our citizens at that particular affordability level. Certainly the market works fine for folks at the upper end uh, of the uh, spectrum. You know, for those of you that have been to San Diego, when we're fly flying into the city, you know you can fly between all the skyscrapers. As I go in every week, as I do in this job, and look at all the sky uh, cranes that are up, I know that the housing uh, that's being built is generally just for the upper end of the income spectrum, uh, with very little benefits for the middle income. There are a few cranes uh, that are associated with subsidized housing projects, and that's a good thing. But that imbalance is really, I, I think, uh, reflected in that skyline of San Diego. The upper end taken care of, a little bit at the lower end, but really nothing uh, that matches something that a teacher or a police officer uh, or any sort of middle class person could afford. Um, the select committee was formed by our speaker, and I appreciate our speaker for um, putting such an emphasis on housing. I think that was evident by what we did this past legislative session. Um, but he was very kind to help uh, create this select committee to give me the opportunity to chair it and to provide a forum for us to develop more fully uh, into issues surrounding housing for the working and middle class.